We will now talk about the shaft of the humerus. The proximal half of the shaft of the humerus is a cylindrical shaped structure, whereas the distal half is triangular. It consists of three borders, known as the anterior, lateral, and the medial borders. The shaft also contains three surfaces, referred to as the anterolateral, anteromedial, and the posterior surfaces. The anterior surface begins at the greater tubercle, and runs downwards almost to the end of the bone. This is in cont the proximal end of the anterior border is continuous with the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus. The lateral border begins just distal to the greater tubercle of the humerus. It thickens distally to form the lateral supracondylar ridge. This, remember, is also the attachment for the lateral intermuscular septum. The medial border is similar to the lateral border is that it forms a medial, inter, a medial supracondylar ridge distally and the radial groove is a shallow groove that interrupts the medial border in the medial third. The radial nerve and the deep brachial artery are located in this groove. Now we have to discuss about the surfaces. Remember we said about the anterolateral surface, anteromedial surface and the posterior surface which is formed as a result of these ridges. So what is the importance of these surfaces? We have to remember there are plenty of muscles in the upper limb and these surfaces forms the attachments of the muscles. The anterolateral surface is largely covered by the deltoid. It also forms the attachment for the lateral portion of the brachialis muscle. The anteromedial surface Remember, is located between the anterior and the medial borders. It provides the attachment of the coracobrachialis muscle around the mid portion. And the distal half of the surface is covered by the medial half of the brachialis muscle. And posterior surface, no surprises, the only muscle on the posterior aspect forms the attachment for the triceps. Now we shall now come to the distal end of the humerus. The distal end of the humerus consists of both articular and non-articular parts. The articular part of the humerus is a modified condyle. It's wider transversely. It articulates with both the ulna and the radius, consists of the medial half, which is a trochlea, and the lateral half, half which is a capitulum. It is a slightly complex anatomy, and I would like you to refer to any available pictures while we do this discussion. The non-articular part consists of the medial and the lateral epicondyles as well as the olecranon fossa, coronoid and the radial fossa anteriorly. Let us talk about what the trochlea looks like. 
The trochlea has a surface which looks like a pulley and it has an anterior, a posterior and an inferior surface of the medial condyle of the humerus. It articulates with the ulna at the trochlear notch. The capitulum though is nothing shaped like a pulley. It is a, con it is a convex a rounded projection that covers the anterior inferior surface of the lateral condyle of the humerus. It forms the articulation for the radial head. Pause. I will now talk to you about the second important bone of the shoulder joint, the scapula. The scapula is also known as the shoulder blade. It's a flat triangular bone located over the back of the trunk and uh, it resides on the posterior aspect of the second to the seventh ribs. The scapula along with the clavicle and the manubrium makes up the pectoral girdle. The scapula is an important bone as each of the each scapula provides a point of attachment for a number of muscles that makes up the arm and the shoulder. It also articulates with the humerus and the clavicle to form the glenohumeral joint and the acromioclavicular joint. The scapulothoracic joint is also a further area of movement where the scapula can move over the posterior thoracic wall, thus allowing for movements of the arm above the height of the shoulder. Now we will discuss about the different bony anatomy or land anatomical landmarks of the scapula. Like any bone which is a triangular shaped organ, uh, the, the scapula comprises of three different borders, which is the superior border, the lateral and the medial border. The superior border is the shortest and the thinnest border of the three. The medial border is also a thin border and it runs parallel to the vertebral column. The lateral border is also called as the axillary border and it runs superolaterally towards the apex of the scapula. There are three angles to the scapula. The superior border meets the lateral border at the lateral angle. It meets the medial border at the superior angle. And the third angle is the inferior angle of the scapula. It has two surfaces. One is the anterior or the costal surface, concave in shape, and it's majorly taken up by the subscapular fossa. And this fossa is filled up with the subscapularis muscle. Uh, at the back of the scapula, it is, con it is convex, it's slightly uneven, and it is divided by a protruding ridge of the bone, known as the spine of the scapula, into a superior half and an inferior half. The superior half is known as the supraspinous fossa, and the inferior half is known as the infraspinous fossa. 
we will discuss about two more processes that are projections from the scapula. The first one is the coracoid process and the second one is the acromion process. The coracoid is a beak-like process which projects anterolaterally from the superior border. Inferior to the coracoid process is the glenoid cavity. Superiorly lies the lateral part of the clavicle and medial to the coracoid process is the suprascapular notch which is where the nerve of the suprascapular nerve passes through. The ligaments of the coracoid process are the coracohumeral ligament, the coracoclavicular ligament and the coracoacromial ligament. The, co the, co the acromion process is a palp palpable lateral and enlarged extension of the spine of the scapula which projects anterolaterally. It arches over the shoulder joint and it articulates with the lateral uh, uh, acromial end of the clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint. This is a synovial joint. This joint is also supported by the acromioclavicular ligament which attaches on one side to the acromion and to the other side to the clavicle. Let us discuss about the blood supply of the scapula. It, is a, it has a rich blood supply. The main blood vessels are the suprascapular artery, the posterior circumflex humeral artery, the circumflex scapular artery and the transverse cervical artery. Pause.